In today's Your Healthy Family, we have another Heart Month story for you. Today we're talking about cholesterol. Yes, it's important to know what your cholesterol level is, and it's always important to have it treated if it's high. And a functional medicine expert, though, here in Colorado Springs, says in his opinion, there is more than one way to approach the problem. So cholesterol is just a, it's a building block. I guess that's the best way I could put it. And it's a building block of vitamin D. So we're all concerned about that for immune health. It's a building block for testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, so hormones, um, but as well as cortisol, which is our primary stress hormone to get us out of danger and get us to safety quickly. It's also a major building block of brain tissue, spinal cord, neurological structures, as well as like our, our, the wall in our, in our cells. So it's, it's a very necessary thing. It's a very essential thing. Being labeled good or bad has been a huge disservice in my opinion. A functional medicine approach is about taking into consideration all of the factors that could be leading to someone having high cholesterol. In my, in my world, like the body's always doing something intelligent. What we label as a symptom, so say it's high blood pressure or high blood sugars or those things, in my world, like why is that happening? And it's usually you're trying to escape something that's potentially harmful. And when we start looking at what are you trying to escape? Well, those are stressors. It could be physical, it could be chemical, it could be emotional, it could be nutritional spiritual, whatever. And so to label that adaptation, that kind of response is bad, now it actually lessens our chance of surviving that potential attack. So like imagine you're out hiking and a mountain lion pops out, you want your blood pressure to get up, you want your blood sugars to go up so you can run as fast as you can, you want your blood to clot in case that tiger gets you and you're not gonna bleed out. So context is always key when we're looking at labeling something good or bad or dangerous or harmful. Um, and, I, and I think that's where the disservice has been is without looking at the context of the story, here's a lab value, it's high on paper, therefore we have to suppress it. And the better question is, if I suppress this, does this increase health outcomes? And that's where you have to like step back and look at a whole bunch of other factors to make sure you're, you're not just covering up the check engine light on your, on your dashboard. Dr. Kurt points to evidence along these lines dating back to the 1950s. Hot off the presses from 1957. <laughs> um, no, and I think like we, we look through history and look at revisionists and be like, okay, there's more to the story. These guys, so these researchers, were looking at what research was coming out and back in the day, that's when the whole fat is causing heart disease issue is coming out. And these guys are like, well, there's more to the story. You didn't, you didn't uh, account for this factor and this and this. In their specific study, they're looking at what does stress do to it? And so they took two groups of accountants, one are corporate accountants and others are just regular tax accountants. And so we know accountants like first of the year to June is their busy season. And so every two weeks they took their cholesterol levels um, and, and like clockwork, you could guess, January 31st when corporate taxes are due, the corporate accountant's cholesterol skyrocketed. Now what they ended up doing is they added blood clotting times into it because one guy actually died in January. From, from a stroke. And so like, well, what else is going on? So after that, they started doing clotting times, how fast your blood clots every two weeks. And just like that, when cholesterol went up, clots got faster, your blood thickened quicker. Um, and so, and it was around their times of stress. So January 31st, April 15th and all that. And they're like, well, what about diet? And so they had them all track their diet and nothing changed calorie wise, percentage of fat, protein, carbs, they looked at their activity levels, which is basically next to nothing because accountants were working 70, 80 hours a week. Um, no weight fluctuations, like the greatest fluctuation was three pounds for these guys. So they kind of took out all these other factors and like, what's just your, your stress level? And they could show like cholesterol drastically increased during those higher stress and higher demand times. It's not just a dietary thing. Like right. just to blame it on in, ingestion of fat, creating that is an unfair narrative around it. So in the functional medicine world, how do you define and have healthy cholesterol? Yeah, it's gonna be lifestyle based. Um, Cause actually when they look at all, like the least adverse events, the actual sweet spot is 210 to 249 for almost every, every age group. The problem is we keep lowering, 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 expecting it to decrease heart disease and it hasn't worked. So what else are we missing? And that's kind of the, the point I try to bring to my clients is like, let's step back and look at the whole forest, not just this individual tree or individual leaf of a high cholesterol or this one symptom or something like that. I'm always watching out for your health. I'm Ira Cronin.